And the world will be better for this Not one man scorned and covered with scars Still stole his last ounce of courage To reach the unreachable star to discuss the ups, downs and sideways of the sport of figure skating and maybe give you a plus 5 GOE along the way. Let's introduce this week's host. Hi, I'm Kite and I'm both thrilled and terrified that the season is picking back up again. You can find me on Twitter at Mossy Zinc. Hey, it's Kat and I'm currently getting snowed in while discussing figure skating with my friends. You can find me on Twitter at Cat Sweets with no E's. What's up? I'm Evie, and I'm still reeling really over the fact that Stefano and Buchan are the European silver medalists. You can find me on Twitter at Double Flats. So obviously, the major news of the last couple of weeks in the figure skating community has been around the John Coughlin case. It's a really big and important topic in figure skating currently, and I think it's going to continue to be so for quite a while. And we are going to cover it, but we want to do the topic justice. We want to talk about this at length. So we're going to release a special episode all about John Coughlin and safe sport in the next couple of weeks. So uh, keep a lookout for that. But for now, we're just going to jump right in to our coverage about the European Championships 2019. So hopping right into it, we're going to first talk about the pairs event. So in first place, we have Vanessa James and Morgan Supre of France. In second, we have Evgenia Tarasova and Vladimir Morozov of Russia. And in third place, we have Alexandra Boykova and Dmitry Kozlovsky of Russia. So I think all in all, this was a really great pairs event in general. I think in general, just Euros was re- a really good competition. I think it might be my favorite of the season so far. Yeah, it was across the board, just a really solid event. Less cursed than last year's. <laughs> <laughs> the most cursed pairs event. <laughs> the pre-Olympic Euros is always the most cursed. Like, it's not an Olympic year, so... No kidding. And we have James and Supre getting a gold medal, like, a year after they were just barely off the podium at Euros. 0.01 off the podium. Talk about a curse lifted. Like, this is it. <laughs> um yeah but for real though like I kept say I keep saying this about them but they're like seizing momentum and they're running with it and like you know they they put out a really great set of programs I think here and I, they obviously set themselves up as one of the front runners because they're the only undefeated pair this season so that's just amazing you know and obviously four continents we're going to see the return of Sway in hand so they've never competed like internationally under this new judging system at all. So it will be very interesting to see how their scores compare. I completely agree. It's going to be very interesting to see how Sway and Han score at Four Continents next week because, you know, I think Worlds is really gearing up to be an absolute, like, crazy competition for pairs because we're going to have, you know, obviously we're going to have Jameson Supre, we're going to have Teresa Van Morozov, we're going to have all of the other like high ranking pairs that we've seen throughout the season. And we've also got the wild cards that are Sway and Han because we haven't really seen them that much apart from Chinese nationals. So I think it's going to be really interesting to see how all of these pairs will do at that event, you know, how their momentum has been building over the season, how they're going to capitalize on that. It's going to also be very interesting, I think, to see how James and Cipri perform at Worlds because they've, you know, obviously they've had the pressure on them mounting with every gold medal they've won, both of the Grand Prix and then they had the Grand Prix final and now they have Euros and they've managed to capitalize on that every single time. They've managed to, you know, pull out really strong performances every time and I really hope they'll be able to do the same thing at Worlds, but it's definitely a humongous amount of pressure being the top 
pair of the season going into Worlds. I have to admit that like I'm super impressed that they don't seem to be cracking under the pressure. Like this is the first season that they're seen as like the favorites for any given competition and you know I was like oh they might not be used to it or like they you know they have to get used to being at the top and being the one that people are chasing after and they're not really letting the pressure get to them and that's you know that's just super impressive for a team that you know was like last year just barely missed out on the grand prix final just barely missed out on the in the euros podium you know that's just that's a really really big change and they're really doing a good job of adjusting to this new um this new position the only time we've really seen them make like major mistakes was at the grand prix final in the short program and then they came back with that amazing free skate mm-hmm. which is still the weaker of their two programs mm-hmm. yeah they're not really like short program skaters so that is something that concerns me a little bit for them going into worlds because well they haven't had a clean short program all season is what i'm trying to say so Definitely better to be a free skate like skater than a short program. Yeah, skater. exactly. The, but they just oh my god, they have to change that ending. Like they <laughs> they have just been getting too lucky that that minus one deduction hasn't even come close to preventing them from winning their competitions. Because I just keep thinking like if they had like a bit more of a wake up call, maybe if they had you know gotten really if another team had gotten close because of you know their negative one deduction they'd be like hey let's you know let's change the ending so that doesn't happen again and like let's not forget that last year in the olympics gold and silver in pairs was decided by less than half a point so that one point deduction may come back to haunt them they're just really really lucky this season that it hasn't yeah. well you could see like morgan was trying to like stop at the end of their free skate he did that really <laughs> awkward like stop. he tried and it still didn't work <laughs> you gotta change it it's gotta go he tried his hardest <laughs> an attempt was made but yeah, yeah. please like ch- change the ending he doesn't it's like very impressive obviously i love the ending of that free skate where he like has her in the air as he slides to a stop. But obviously the judges don't love it. So please change it before world. Thank you. Okay. And then in second place, you know, Tarasova Morozov, they've recycled their short program from last season, the Rachmaninoff short program. Do we all think this was a good call for them as a team? It's definitely the safe call going into worlds. I think Tarasova and Morozov came into this season as the favorites, barring maybe Suihan, but Suihan weren't competing on the Grand Prix. And then you could see them kind of start to make little mistakes. And then James Seaprey became the favorites. And I think this was like their wake up call that maybe they need to go back to something that's more comfortable for them. And that they can kind of show off like their strong points, like how, you know, how lovely their technique is and kind of classical, you know, nice lines, the elegance that the Russian pairs do so well. I'm just thankful that they changed the costume i didn't like the one that they had last season for this program and i didn't like the the one that they had for their previous i feel good short program either like they were both pretty they were not good i really like this new one <laughs> i like the program but yeah the costume was yeah it didn't really make sense honestly i kind of prefer their previous short the i feel good short program to the recommended one i don't know what it is i think it's just because i personally prefer more like fun themed programs and while recommended off you know it, it does show off their like classic russian style their clean lines and their really solid elements i think it's just also kind of emphasizes the fact that as a pair they are kind of lacking in a sort of like sense of connection with each other and I think while i feel good wasn't like a perfect program i mean it was a program that they weren't even like they didn't even prepare over the like the off season because if you guys remember they went to the russian test skates with a different short program and then they got told that they needed to change it and then they changed it within a couple of weeks before finlandia trophy to to this to i feel good and then they have had, been having kind of issues with it all throughout the season and while i think that rekmanov is a better program for them like stylistically speaking i think I feel good was a little bit more appealing to my to my personal like yeah. taste. And I just I think <laughs> Evgenia especially her face at the start she's so happy and smiling. You don't get to see that from her very often. So I think that was a really good choice for them. So yeah, I'm, I mean I'm not disappointed, but I'm just kind of a little little tiny bit let down. 
I mean, like, I just feel like they don't look like they want to be skating to campy music ever. Like, I'm not sure <laughs> who actually decides the music for them. But, like, even Candyman and I Feel Good, like, I don't know. The, the thing is that they don't have a lot of facial expression. Like, not much is going on with both of them. Um, especially Vladimir. I don't think I've ever seen a facial expression on him. Um, <laughs> but, like... At least with the Rachmaninoff, you know, the lyrical style of it gives me a chance, like I said, to like to appreciate their lines um, and extension and, oh man, their gorgeous elements like their throws and their twist. But here, I, I think it just looked a little bit untrained. Like this seemed to be a rush job. It was probably a really hasty decision to ditch their short program after Russian Nationals because, like, I had never, I don't think I've ever seen them stumble like that on the side by side, uh, triple toes in the short program. Like, they yeah. both looked so off. Um, and they stumbled in the same way, too. They went off axis and then stepped out. It was weird. Which is really strange to see because their triple toes have been pretty consistent all throughout the season. And they're and gorgeous, too. And they're really good, yeah. To see them have issues with it here in, like, in not just in one program, but in both is quite troubling. I mean, I really hope that whatever's going on with them, like, obviously they haven't had the best season, not just results-wise, but, you know, at, at Ross Telecom, Evgenia had that really awful fall... Mm -hmm. And she had to go to the hospital for that in the stitches. And then, you know, they've had less than a month after Russian Nationals to, you know, revamp their rack short program for Euros. So I, and all of the while they have this pressure because they know that James and Cibre are going to be at Euros. They've already faced off against them at the Grand Prix final and they didn't come out on top. So that's just, you know, pressure surmounting at this one event. And it was just... It's really sad to see them have these kind of issues because they're one of my favorite teams in the field at the moment. And they're just, they're such a technically talented team. I don't want to see them have these kind of issues. Hopefully by Worlds, they can, you know, get it together a little bit more, but they're also young. So, you know, maybe this season is just a season of growth. Yeah. And in in third place, we have Boykova and Kozlovsky. Yeah. Speaking of a young team (laughs) with potential to grow. (laughs) I honestly, like... I knew, obviously, going into the season, I knew who they were, and I was kind of, like, I hadn't really seen them skate very many times before this season, and I've just completely, like, fallen in love with this team over the last couple of months. I mean, honestly, I think they might be my favorite Russian pair at the moment. Just not only do they have the typical extremely solid elements of a Russian pair, you know, they've got a great twist, they've got really, really solid throws, uh, but... They've just got such a great charm and they work so well together as a team. I'm just, their programs, nah, they're not my favorite. Well, their they're free, free skate is very Russian. It's not cracker. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't mind their short program. I think it really, it shows up Alexandra's charm and her like expressions are so great in that program. But yeah, the free skate is just kind of meh. But I think if they had programs that really showed off their own, their skills and expression, I think they could easily be you know, in line for potential, like, podiums at Worlds or, the like, winning Grand Prix and stuff next season, you know. There's a lot of potential in this team. I am sold on everything except their programs, <laughs> which is, like, really, really <laughs> unfortunate. It's, like, the reason I haven't fully, like, invested myself in them yet because their elements are all great. Like, their twist is gorgeous. Their spins are so in sync. Like, I think that they were the most in sync, like, not even a millisecond off. That was crazy. And their position in the lifts and, you know, the air position that she gets um, in the throws are so great. They and they also have one of the most gorgeous side-by-side triple styles that I've ever seen in pairs. Um, and, like, I do think that they could work on their expression a little bit, especially in that short program, which is, like, a little bit more up-tempo. And their body movement seems a little bit more tentative than I would prefer for something more outwardly expressive. So that's just something that they could work on, like, their interpretation. But other than that, like, their elements are really solid. So there's so much potential for them. And considering this is only their, like, first season as a senior team it's very promising i'm just i'm so excited for them yeah and russia needs a number three paris team so they're it moving on to the men's event in first place we had javier fernandez of spain 
second place Alexander Samarin of Russia, and in third place Matteo Rizzo of Italy. So, Javier Fernandez. Oh, Javi. Kind of kind of <laughs> one due to everyone else dying a little bit. The free skate, the free skate basically had no survivors at Euros. It was a bit of a mess. Mass extinction event of the men's free skate <laughs> just left like no one standing basically. I know. But but still just a very very well deserved seventh consecutive European title for him and a fantastic way to close out his career. This is his last competition. He's confirmed that this is it. He's retiring. And I just I just love the symbolism of the programs he chose so much. He skated a short program to Malaganya, which won him his second world title in 2016. And his free program was Man of La Mancha, which won him an Olympic bronze medal last year. And just the fact that he was able like this is the only time he's competed this season and the only time in almost a year the only time bar japan open he was a japan Which, open for the first yeah it's not really a competition let's be real yeah so <laughs> the fact that and he he literally returned to toronto in like early january so the fact that he was able to rotate and land four successful quads on three weeks of training is just crazy and it's really a testament to the caliber of athlete he's been over the past seven years. Javi finally just, like, stopped caring. He just snapped. Like, they yeah. they called his quad sal under in the short program. He just went after the judges. Yeah, and, I like, know. And, like, lambasted them in the press conference. I love it. I love it. I've never seen Clap that from back. him, but I, I love it. He was like, you know what? I'm, I need to go out in style. I need to tell him, like, what I really think. Yeah. Yeah. I like in the Kiss and Cry in the short program, Brian basically explaining to Harvey how the new judging system worked. It was so adorable. I just, oh my god, guys, I don't think I've cried that much during a performance like since the Olympics last I know. year. During the free skate, I was openly sobbing in front of my laptop to the point where my brother literally came in to ask if I was all right because he heard me crying so much <laughs> during it. And I was just like, oh, Harvey, I'm so sad. Just... Oh, it was a really great send off to his career. Like as you said, Kai, like he, the choice to uh, to use these two programs this season. Like, not only have those programs like gotten him some of the biggest achievements in his career before, but they're just so uniquely Spanish, and they say so much about him <laughs> as a skater. In case we were wondering which country he was from, what? Javi is Spanish? Spanish? No. <laughs> what? This is completely Never. new information. <laughs> exactly. I did not know this. I just, and both of those programs are probably my favorite programs of Harvey's, I think, out of all of them. So, Me too. especially Man of La Mancha. I mean, the ending to that program with the unreachable star bits uh, always uh, gets to me. Dream it's the a, impossible it's, dream. Oh, and then that's what God. it is. That's what his career has kind of like. It, it's the perfect ending to, you know, he started off not qualifying for free skates at Europeans and getting to Worlds as, you know, the only Spanish men skater and then having to move away from Spain at a young age and go to train with Nikolai Morozov and then moving to Toronto and just finally getting the, the like, the consistency down and getting the recognition that he as a skater deserves. Just It's so nice to see his whole career get closed off here in such a great way. It's just amazing to me that, like you said, he didn't make the free skate in his first two Europeans. And then the only placement he's ever gotten on the podium is first. Like he never got any other medal. Like it's just been, it's just been gold, <laughs> which is so great. It's so great. <laughs> it's what he deserves. Exactly. <laughs> It's going to I think it's going to be interesting to look at like who is going to follow next year as the next European champion because we've had 7 years of Harvey kind of coming in as the favorite nearly every time. Just come back again next year, Harvey. He just keeps coming back till he like that yes. the only competition he ever does. Again. Get get that eighth consecutive medal. Well, didn't he say like after years in one of the interviews, he said he's going to do Japan Open later. Yes, yes. Again. yeah, he's been invited to Japan Open, so we will see him compete, quote unquote, again. Nobu convince him to go back to Euros. Put Euros in Spain. <laughs> if Euros is in Spain, I bet he'll be there. He would go. He would go. Well, the field is like blown wide open now that he's basically yeah. gone. So yeah, it's definitely going to be interesting to see who kind of steps into that power vacuum and takes over. You know, the title is the top European man. So 
in silver, we have Alexander Samarin of Russia. You know, I think out of all of the Russian men this season, he's probably the one that's been the most consistent overall. Yeah, he By really far. has. By far. He's landing things. <laughs> yeah, it's already like a step above basically all the other Russian men at this point. It's Samarin and then probably Voronov as well. He's been, yeah, uncle. He was pretty good in the first couple, in the first couple of competitions. He was pretty good, but then... Obviously, he's not getting sent to things in the second half of the season. But yeah, I mean, I'm not surprised. He obviously did put out two really strong performances here. But I think there's absolutely no doubt in my mind that those the scores that he got were a little bit inflated. I mean, as a they kind bit. of always are. Yeah. A little bit, you know. <laughs> just, just a tad. It's a, it's a running theme throughout this season. It's not something that I was completely surprised about. No, but, definitely not. But, you know, it's it's kind of a letdown, I guess. Yeah, you shouldn't be able to get positive GOE on a jump that has a turnout. Like Yeah, his <laughs> opening quad lutz, like, he turned out of it, and they gave him, like, 0. 0.6, like, positive GOE, like, small GOE, but it was positive. Yeah. That reminded me of how um, Elizaveta Tuktamishova, she often... Um, turns out of her triple axle, right? And then she gets negative GOE on it. And that's like, you know, that's something that you expect. And he turned, yeah. yeah. And then he, like, so when Samarin turned out of the, the quad Lutz, I was like, why is it green? Why why is the GOE green? <laughs> in my opinion, also giving him 88 in program component scores for the free skate was pretty excessive. Like, it sh- should be about seven to eight points lower. <laughs> yeah. It should be, like, low 80s would be like a comfortable place for him given the performance he's actually putting out agreed i feel bad that because like we kind of i think we kind of bagged on him during idf about his pcs and his jump goe as well but it's a little bit of a concerning trend when someone is you know getting over inflated scores from competition to competition i'm just like i'm i'm displeased about what kind of precedent this sends. Although I gotta say that like obviously you know the the Euro is being held in Belarus this year you know the crowd there are there were a lot of Russian fans in the crowd and during the free skate I they got so into the greatest show event like I think the crowd in general was got into a lot of performances that weekend like they were clapping along not always in time but they were, they were <laughs> clapping along oh, they were being boy. really enthusiastic and I think that because he skated the free skate like pretty clean and I actually found myself kind of enjoying the Greatest Showman program. I know that sounds really weird coming out of my mouth, but you know, yeah. whatever. <laughs> um, for the Especially the, the second half of it, I found myself quite enjoying his, it. I think his performance of it was pretty much the best that we've seen of it this season because I think he was capitalizing on the crowd getting so hyped up over it and... I like that's great to see like I personally am not a huge fan of Samarin and you know that's fine we all have our own opinions and we all have our own preferences but I I am quite I'm happy that he managed to have good skates here and I'm happy that he was happy with his own performances like you could see in the kiss and cry he was completely overjoyed by how well he did and how well the fans were praising him and stuff so you know his scores I don't agree with but I'm glad that he's proud of the skates that he put out here I'm gonna be totally totally real with you when i watched him live i actually don't remember anything (laughs) of the program because i spent his entire program like freaking out because i knew hobby was next (laughs) but then after i went back and like actually i like calmed down i went back and watched it i was like yeah i agree this is his expression has definitely improved Uh since the beginning of the season because i saw this program live at skate canada i don't think i could tell you a single thing about it (laughs) other than the fact that he like mostly landed his opening jump like that was it i will say that he actually did have more facial expressions here like he actually did crack a smile at the second in the second half and that that was that was good i was like oh that's 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 cute like (laughs) (laughs) i'm into that (laughs) i would like to see him you know obviously he's still quite a new skater on the senior field so i would really like to see him develop his performance and his presentation in general because he does have his own kind of charm and, they, you know, I would like to see more of that, you know. I want to see him not just land his jumps, but I want to see him perform too. Come on. He seems pretty shy. Like, his personality seems just very kind of introverted. So I don't 
think that the greatest showman is necessarily the best vehicle for him to be, you know, making a point. Well, I mean, I mean, the greatest showman isn't necessarily the best vehicle for anyone. Let's that's I was true. Just gonna that's say. true. <laughs> but but especially in this case, I don't know. He just seems like he kind of has like this really cheeky, like wry sense of humor. I don't know. I'd like to see him try something maybe a little more contemporary. Like I think his short program is much better for him than his free skate. Yeah. And you can see he, he seems to believe in it more too when he's not, you know, wearing that greatest showman costume with the ruffles and everything and just kind of grimacing as he goes through the motions. But yeah, he definitely has momentum going like on his side going into worlds. Russia hasn't announced their world team yet officially, but like a hundred percent he's gonna go barring, you know, any unforeseen circumstances and I mean rightfully so I would say. He deserves it, yeah. He produced results. Yeah, he if he skates like this at Worlds, he could win a medal, depending on what the other men do. Definitely. Oh, boy. <laughs> That'll be a time. <laughs> we'll, we'll get there. Yeah. We'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Yeah. We'll get there. And going on to our surprise bronze medalist yet again, Matteo Rizzo from Italy. I love him. He's so adorable. He is adorable. I love him so much. And I'm just, I really... I was so surprised by how good his new free skate is. Yes, uh, I enjoyed it a lot. If, uh, some people might not know about this, but, you know, after Italian Nationals in December, Matteo lost to Daniel Grassel, who was also at Europeans. Uh, he competed on the Junior Grand Prix earlier in the season. Uh, Daniel is quite well known for not only having a lot of crazy contortionist spin positions, but he also has quite a lot of quads. He's got a quad loop. He's got a quad lutz. Uh, even though even though those quads are extremely terrifying, Matteo, you know, has a bit of an edge on him in terms of performance and interpretation. And uh, you know, Matteo has like really lovely lines and really is just a really nice skater. And he's got mm-hmm. really good basics, but he just doesn't have that ki- that consistency with his quads and with his triple axel and just his jumps overall and you know that was a problem for him at Italian Nationals and afterwards he scrapped his Rolling Stones free skate and changed it to a uh, Queen medley which I think was a really good choice because I wasn't a, a humongous fan of the Rolling Stones free I think it worked in it, I think the cut of the music was a little bit jarring at times so to me, it didn't work, but this wa- this program works just so well for him. I think the choices of the music that they used and the way that it progresses throughout the program, like the first the first section where it starts in Bohemian Rhapsody and then like effort- effortlessly goes into Love of My Life, and it's just it works so well. In the end, it's Don't Stop Me Now, and he's jamming out, and just he had so much fun in the step sequence at the end because he skated so well, and he landed his quad. So, yes. Yay! It was it was great. Yeah, and he jumped all the way from tenth to third, which is that, you know that is amazing. He really did perform super well, and props to him. That's not easy. He's just so enjoyable to watch when he goes all out. Like in the the, the last half of the program, when the music picks up, the audience gets into it, mm-hmm. and he just you know smiles and goes off into a crazy step sequence. Adorable. It's adorable, yeah. We just have to shout out his Ghostbusters gala as oh well. My God. It's just so cute. That was adorable. <laughs> I feel like the gala this is, at, at, at Euros was a little bit more like intense and super Russian than I'm normally yeah. used to. Yeah. The president of Belarus literally showed up at the end of it. <laughs> that, that was yeah. the funniest thing. <laughs> that was a thing that happened. But yeah. Tenth to third, great job, Mateo. There, there were some really wild ordinal switches between the short and the free, and you know some more. This was one of the better ones. Um, there will be a couple of tragic ones. So speaking of which, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, Mikhail Kolyada, unfortunately. I'm just so sad. The good news was that he. Yeah, let's focus. Let's focus on the good things. Yeah, first. <laughs> he was the third ever man to score above 100 in the short program under the new judging system, and with only one quad, which is quite yeah, impressive. Yeah, completely deserved. And he was eight <sighs> points ahead of both um, Samarin and Javier after the short program, and really just seemed poised to take the title. And then just the free skate happened yeah it happened same issues that he's kind of been having all season like it it just really like when it comes to like many of his free skates the only way you can describe it is it happened like it 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 was we we try to we try not to remember a lot of it or rewatch we just 
we just cry about how good his skating skills and his performance is and jumps don't actually jumps are not valid when Kolia does skates okay <laughs> <laughs> well yeah his jumps were just like all over the place and he actually hurt his hand when he like yeah. fell on a triple yeah. loop and kind of landed on his like he caught himself on his wrist basically and you could see him like shaking his like hand trying to like get the pain to go away for the rest of the Yeah, it was a weird fall, I remember. Like, he was trying to catch himself. Fortunately, it's it seems to just be a big bruise. It's not fractured or broken. So, I mean, obviously, hoping that he's going to have a speedy recovery before Worlds, but uh, just... And, yeah, the really frustrating thing is that, yes, granted, this event was held in Belarus, which is a Russian, a former Russian satellite, um, but, like, generally, internationally, judges are pretty willing to give him high scores when he does well. Like, you would think that him being so inconsistent would actually hurt his reputation internationally. Even when he's clean, that's not really the case. Like, he's capable of putting together, like, very, very high scores when he actually lands his jumps. So that just kind of makes it all the more frustrating, I think, that he can't put it together. Because if he had two clean programs, I think he could contend for the world title depending on what the other men do. And he was also skating last. Yeah, so he had the advantage of skating, you know, being the last skater and the judges knowing, like, oh, this is it. Like, you know, you can throw all of your PCS at him if you want to because no one's going to come after him. And then... I feel like probably skating last probably just made him even more nervous, though. <laughs> like, it was a lose-lose situation. But, like, not skating last also doesn't really improve the situation. There's just... I don't know. There's no, like, easy fix for it. Speaking of another skater for whom jumps do not exist, <laughs> <laughs> Kevin Amos. Uh, we love him okay. so much. To see him do so well in both programs at Euros is just, it It makes my heart so happy. Where it's are so his warm. PCS? Oh, oh my god. I mean, he's been lowballed in PCS throughout all all the season practically and that's just because you know he doesn't have that kind of international reputation that other skaters do and that you know that's understandable kind of you know but I I just I especially after the short that was just the short program there was so explosive and yes. crazy it just I love his programs this season are just so good I want to see him get the scores that he deserves internationally I just I need it he just has such beautiful entrances to his jumps too like his triple axle like I don't know where his PCS are but I hope someone finds them before next season he did like that like freaking cartwheel that he did during his step sequence. Oh my god. Like, yes. Okay. <laughs> that happened. Like, how can you see that and not give him PCS? I don't know. Anyways, yes. Kevin Amos for Euro's podium next year. He was fourth. So that's that's still an amazing showing for him. Kevin for European champion, to be honest. I think that that would be amazing. Uh, honestly. Yes. Honestly. So let's go on to Ice Dance. And I gotta say, this dance event was kind of amazing at Euros this year. Yes! Uh, oh my goodness. I mean, I talked, I, I said earlier that this was probably the best competition of the season, but like, this was probably the best dance event that I have seen in like a long while. I know. It was insane. Since like, the Olympics. Not only did we have a really amazing podium, we just. Well, a lot of the performances here were just so amazing. So let's just quickly go through the podium. So to pretty much no one's surprise, we in first place, we have uh, Gabrielle Papadakis and Guillaume Cizeron from France. In second place, we have uh, Alexandra Stepanova and Ivan Buchan of Russia. And then in third place, we have Charlene Guinard and Marco Fabri of Italy. So... You know, this is a great podium. It was a really all-around great event. And I found it great that so many of the teams have been really drilling their levels, their step sequences, mm -hmm. their, t their tango romantica patterns over the last couple months. And they've come to Euros prepared. You know, we've seen, in general, all of the levels from all of the top teams here were much higher than they have been in the first half of the season. And that's really awesome to see, considering we've had so many Tango Romantica level ones and twos throughout the Grand Prix and the Grand Prix final. Yeah, we had those here too, just not not so egregiously. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like we had, like obviously, Papa Duck and Cicero didn't skate a clean pattern, but they did get um, a level four in the second half of the se uh, sequence. There was only one team that got 
that skated a clean pattern, and that was uh, Natalia Kaslashek and Maxim Spodoriev of Poland, which is kind of a surprise, and we'll talk a bit more about them a little bit later. But in general, like, levels have been really strong here. Like, Papadakis and Cicerone and Guinard and Fabry both became the first teams to skate maximum level free dancers. They got level fours or, you know, all their choreo elements obviously don't have maximum levels. They are all level one, but their step sequences were all, and their spins and their twizzles were all level four. This is the first time we've seen it under the new judging system. That's pretty amazing. And we also saw Stefan and you can get level four on their diagonal step sequence. Yes. It's just, it's so good to see teams, you know, step up to the plate at a championship uh, with these great levels. It's it's just, it's a relief, honestly. After, after Grand Prix final and the travesty with levels there, I just, I'm glad we've got a nice event, guys. Yeah, I mean, I, I was wondering if maybe the tech panel was a little bit more lenient because they're, the levels were so good. But I also couldn't confirm, like, for the pattern especially, because the camera sometimes would just cut off the feet <laughs> during the <Yep>. key points. <laughs> and so, like, yeah, cameras, can we do a better job of not cutting off the feet during ice dance, especially during the pattern, and most importantly, during the key points? <laughs> I think during the the rhythm dance, the tech panel was being a little bit lenient towards the uh, rocker in the first section. Oh, yeah. Because I saw quite a lot of them that looked flat, or very, kind of shallow that I personally, if I was being a tech a tech specialist, I wouldn't have called it. Pretty sure I wouldn't have given Guillaume his rocker. Agreed. Yeah, it was a little bit too shallow for mm-hmm. my liking. But, you know, overall, the teams d- had really awesome performances. It's just, it's so good. I love this dance event, guys. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it was so good. And, like, obviously we want to, like, talk about the teams as well. But, like, Papadakis and Cicerone, they're, they're just amazing. Like... I don't know what to say. Like, yeah, their their scores are kind of over the top, but I still think that their quality is unmatched and they absolutely deserve to be the top. I don't know by that gap, but, you know, Papadakis and Cicerone are also not a perfect team. Like, I, they had a lot of flaws in the rhythm dance um, that could have been easily exploited. Yeah, they didn't have the, the highest base value. So if other teams, you know, get their levels then they could definitely you know pull up close enough to Papadakis and Cicerone like Stepano and Buchan were not that much farther behind Papadakis and Cicerone and they didn't even beat their old world record by that much even though they had a level two on the first part of their pattern and they had a B on the first part of their pattern when they broke the world record at IDF so yeah they were they broke the world record by less than a point Exactly, yeah. So yeah. The judges are definitely willing to shell out the big PCS whenever they perform. And, you know, that's kind of to be expected. Mm-hmm. You know, we've, we saw it at IDF. We're seeing it here. We've seen it pretty much throughout the last couple of seasons with them. You know, it's not it's not surprising. And, you know, speaking as someone who really wasn't a fan of them until this season, you know, I, I kind of, their scoring last season kind of put me off becoming fans of them and I really haven't been connected to any of their programs up until this point I've completely been won over by them to the point where I'm just like I don't really like the inflation is obviously one thing but their programs and their skating this season are so good that I'm willing to kind of disregard that yeah and they still are the best in my opinion yeah definitely I would you know obviously Guillaume hasn't had the best season with the injury that he had earlier that took him took them out of NHK but I think once he gets back into, you know, fighting form and really goes back and like to the Guillaume we're used to seeing in terms of his uh, skating skills, I think they're they're going to be unstoppable either way, I feel. But they're definitely going to be a, f- a force that hardly anyone could contend with for gold at that point. Yeah, in the past, I've been pretty critical of the judges kind of scoring them so high that you know, no other team can really hope to reach them, but yeah, after seeing them against the field here and watching U.S. Nationals over the weekend as well, like, there's just really no comparison. And it's just, it it bears mentioning that their score in the short program would have approached 90 if they had gotten all of the levels that they lost on the first part of the pattern and the step sequence and Guillaume's twizzles, and it's just insane. Like, they're by far in a league of their own. And barring any major mistakes, I think that all of the other teams are just going to be fighting for silver and bronze at Worlds. Like, they're unstoppable. I just love that 
they have a soft tango. I love that rhythm dance so much. And especially their pattern, even if they're, it's technically not perfect, like the way that Gabby in particular expresses and interprets the music during the pattern, like you just like watch her arms. Like I'm just so drawn to the way that she like moves her arms during the pattern. It's just so soft and fluid. She has a very gentle hold and, you know, a gentle hold shows like an ease of execution and she just she just sells that rhythm dance like no one okay let's go on to our silver medalists alexander stefanova and ivan buchan oh my god i think a lot of the listeners will probably know how big fans we are of sb i think every i think everyone who knows us knows that we are absolutely in love with them and seeing them get a silver medal here is just the highlight of this week for me i feel oh my gosh like when they got their scores uh, after the rhythm dance, I was like, justice is served. <laughs> like, literally. <laughs> this is the and- first time they've scored over 80 in the rhythm dance. And it's just, it's so good to see them because they've had problems with this program at, at Russ Telecom and then at the Grand Prix final. And then they had the disappointment that was Russian Nationals coming in second there. And then, yeah, they've had just, they've come back from that. They've bounced back. They've drilled their pattern. You know, they got full credit for the second half of the of the Tanker Romantica I'm just I'm so happy that they were able to rebound like that yes and they also kind of reworked the the choreo um before the pattern at the very end and I love it I personally think that it just it's just so much more dramatic and it fits way better than the previous choreography so I'm, I'm here for it and I love it and their scores have surpassed um Hubble and Donahue in international personal best this season and they're the only other team besides Papadakis and Cicerone to remain undefeated. So it will be super interesting to see how they um, compete with Hubble and Donahue at Worlds. Yeah, and also we'll, we'll be seeing Hubble and Donahue next week at Four Continents as well. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how the scores compare overall and looking into Worlds, how that's going to play out. Obviously, Stefano and Buchan got silver here and they weren't podium favorites going into this I don't think because obviously Sinitsune and Katsalapov had issues in the rhythm dance they got basically taken completely out of contention after the rhythm dance because of the issues they had there and so Stefano and Buchan really managed to stay afloat and they managed to skate to the two best programs of the season every it's just it's amazing it's awesome I think also I think skating last in the free dance probably helps with their oh, yeah. score overall you know that I, as soon as I saw the draw results I saw them create last I was like yes give them all the PCS that they deserve what happened in the dance event at Euros is what I had hoped would be my it would be like my almost dream scenario of what happened at Grand Prix final except just replaced Papadakis and Cicerone with Hubble and Donahue same um <laughs> like I was like oh yes they can like skate last and then get those like last skater PCS I mean and then they they did basically because they scored so well in the free dance but yeah I mean I think they they just got to keep working on those levels like those levels are what is going to be the determinant of the podium um, at Worlds, and like Sasha got uh, a level two, I believe, on the one foot step sequence. Sweetie, please, just you know, I think I saw her jump a turn or two, so like, just just let's just work on that, you know, <laughs> like use those well, long legs to yes. your advantage. You know? Yes, exactly. Just like you, you close up the gaps, and we can we can, you know, the world podium is not just a dream. Well, I think it's worth pointing out that if they'd gotten all of their levels in the pattern, they would have been really, really close to Papadox and Cicerone after the rhythm dance. Because Papadox and Cicerone were a little more than three points, a little under three points ahead. And they lost two points on just the base value of the pattern. So yeah, their scoring potential is like enormous. And they could, I think they could challenge for a world medal realistically if they get their levels, please just drill the pattern some more. Just score the same way as you did here, because like I said, they have higher personal bests now than Hubble and Donahue. So with the bronze medal, we have Charlene Guinard and Marco Fabri. And this is right after, obviously, they got uh, bronze at the Grand Prix final and they had a really good early season. And now they're continuing to capitalize on that momentum. And they skated two amazing programs here. Just... I've just fallen in love with this team so much, you guys. They're adorable. And like their their coach, Barbara Fuser-Poli, is just like the cutest 
ever. Like, I just love watching their kiss and cry. Along with Stepanum and Buchan, like, they have some of the most entertaining kiss and cry reactions. Their reaction after the free dance scores was so cute. Like, they were literally screaming. I know, she was, like, sh shrieking. And, like, Barbara oh was God. just, like hugging everyone like she was so excited afterwards too she like just jumped onto i don't know their other coach i think like as soon as the <laughs> dance ended and then ran over to the kiss and cry i love them they're so adorable they obviously have been building up in their confidence since they had such a good early season and they came into euros like upping their technical content in their lifts because you know some of most of their lifts are really quite nice they hit really good positions but they just wanted to you know elevate that they wanted to get more difficult more creative and I find that their choreo lift at the end of the program I found wasn't great it looked a little bit awkward on the dismount I think that's probably just the fact that they've only had like a month to practice it properly so you know that's obviously something that can easily get ironed out as the season goes on. But I think that going like forward, they really have to focus more on consistency with it, with their GOE, with their levels, rather than introducing new elements. Because realistically, they don't really need to up the content. They're already hitting their levels on their lifts and stuff. You know, obviously there's like personal growth and they want to do that. But if you're not going to be hitting the GOE and you're not going to be rewarded as well for that, I personally don't see much of a point in it. I mean... You know, they could obviously, they've got like, they've got over a bit over two months into Worlds. That's enough time to drill that lift and make it look effortless and beautiful like it's meant to be. But yeah, I just, I don't really see the point in them completely overhauling their tech at this point in time in the season. Yeah, same. But they are, I think that they are kind of the example of how good levels can make you a good contender because I think that their technical prowess is what is keeping them in contention with all these top teams that like in the past like no one really had them on their radar and no now suddenly everyone's like looking at them like oh oh my goodness like they're making podiums left and right because they're so technically sound they were so close to nailing the tango romantica too i think it was marco that had the timing call on the second key point right like every second man got a timing call for that point it was like everyone in the top three yeah yeah at first it was um at first it was him and then it was uh, Charlene's rocker also had the timing call. And I was like, I, I, their rockers were like at the same, uh, what? And then they changed it. So she got the, she got the Y. And their rockers are so perfect, like too. They're, they're gorgeous. They are so deep and effortless. Uh -huh. yeah. And so, you know, those levels are what are keeping them afloat. They had a perfect, they had perfect levels in the free dance. So get your levels and you, you, you get rewarded. So obviously a bit of a surprise of the event. Sinitsina and Katsalapov finishing off the podium here after the rhythm dance. Shocking. I gasped so hard when that happened. Like it was, a, it, I think it was like 7.30 in the morning and I like gasped like, oh. <gasps> I didn't wake up for that, but I gasped when I, when I re, we watched it, even though I knew it was happening, so. Yeah. 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 I mean, they've been so technically solid all season. They have one of the best patterns. Yeah, stunning. It's such a shame, too, because that's it, it is one of, if not the best rhythm dance of the season, too. Like, they just they skate that pattern in such close holds. They have, you know, uh, incredible footwork before and after their step sequence. Their, their tango, they were almost at max level. So, you know, it, and it's just. It's just fascinating, I guess, because it seemed really after the Grand Prix and after Russian Nationals that um, they were going to be favored as the top Russian team because, you know, most of the judges had scored um, Sinitsyn and Katsalapov over Stepanov and Bukin in um, both overall score and PCS at Russian Nationals. But, you know, do we think that the tides have kind of shifted a little bit or is it just a little bit more up in the air like Resfed doesn't? know who they're going to back well i think that if both teams skated clean i think that they would still give the give it to sinitsuna and katsalapov just because they've you know even though stepanova and buchan have had more wins this season i think sinitsuna and katsalapov have been a bit more consistent with their levels in the rhythm dance and they do have the national title you know a, a fall on the twizzles you know nikita fell and then victoria put both of her hands down so it wasn't it wasn't a complete fall but she did transfer her weight onto her 
arms and onto the ice and so that counts as a fall even though she didn't hit the ground yeah that double deduction though oof. yeah it completely took them out of the running for any place at the podium and you know that is kind of a fluke mistake you know you don't see those kind of errors from a team like that very often I mean you know you, you're thinking back to when Nikita had his previous partner in 2014 Worlds when a similar thing kind of happened they were poised to take the world title and then that completely screwed them over you know it's com- sad to see this kind of error happen to them in the rhythm dance because they have had really good momentum throughout the season and they are a very technically solid team I just hope that they that this experience won't hamper them down for worlds and they won't get too in their heads about it and I hope that they'll be able to get back to that sort of consistency that they've been showing off for the for the earlier part of the season yeah, I think personally if we're going to compare them to Stepanov and Bugin I, I would still say that Sinitsuna and Katsalapa probably have the higher scoring potential just because they've been really consistent in getting their levels this season but I think it's worth pointing out that even in the free dance they lost to Stepanov and Bugin when both of them were like pretty relatively clean. So yep. I don't, I mean, obviously you can't take one competition as a sign that, oh, you know, the judges or the rest, the, the federation are like suddenly switching their favor just upon a Buchan. But it's worth pointing out that even when both teams skate well, it is possible for Stepan upon Buchan to come out on top. So it definitely makes kind of the Russian dance rivalry at Worlds a lot more interesting. So kind of the surprise dark horses of this event, Natalia Kalashek and Maxim Spodoriev of Poland, they skated the only clean Tango Romantica pattern of this event. And they also got two level fours on their one foot step sequence in the free dance. And a couple of weeks ago, they competed at Torin Cup, which was a, a B level competition. You know, it, it was a very small event. This, that was the event that uh, Chalk and Bates had their first season's appearance at. And they did the same thing there. They got two level fours there. And honestly, when I saw that and I saw the levels, I thought it was kind of just a one time thing. You Generous know? B challenger series. Yeah. Type. It, and that, yeah. and the, and the B event, and it was in Poland. So, you know, it was kind oh, yeah. of, <laughs> thinking of along those lines. But honestly, I was so surprised that they were able to replicate that here and just their footwork in general. I wasn't paying a huge amount of attention to them in the first half of the season. But after this, I went back and watched some of their performances. And honestly, their footwork is really, really, really solid. They've got very nimble and very like easy, deep edges. And it's it's very interesting to see them play so well here. You know, is this going to be a team that we have to look out for next season? Because, you know, if you hit your levels, you're going to rise. You're going to get those good marks. You know, levels are the most important thing. They had the highest base value in the rhythm dance. They had almost perfect yeah. levels except for their diagonal steps. It's going to be very interesting to see how this team, you know, goes after this event, how they're going to fare at Worlds in the next season, because I think they've really got something good going for them. And then we also just want to do a quick shout out to Lila Fear and Lewis Gibson, the Disco Brits, as we as we love to call them. And like, they're really making a move this season with Coombs and Buckland sitting out. Like, that free dance is just so good. Like, I sent it to my friend over the weekend because she was like studying and she was like, I need something like to watch that'll cheer me up. And I sent her this and she was like, oh my gosh, this is so much fun. It is. So she like, she really, really enjoyed it. Like they, they just have some of the most fun and unique choreographic elements, like those character steps in the beginning and those slides at the end. They got those awesome arm variations in their twizzles. Oh, so fab. It really works. I'm just a little bit worried about Lila at this event. She did get quite low levels in the Tango Romantica and she also only got a level one in the one footstep sequence in the free and like yeah. she hasn't been hitting like level fours at every event but she has you know this is quite troubling to see a level one at a big event like this I mean it could just be the pressure of the event you know it's a big event they've gotten really good re- momentum they've had really big scores throughout the season and you know it could just be that it could just be the pressure but I'm just worried that it's could be something bigger than that. I don't know. Yeah. I want her to drill her edges, her footwork, and come back at Worlds and completely slay the game because, oh, yes, the free dance. 
So for the ladies here at Euros, in first place, we have Sofia Samadorova of Russia. In second place, we have Alina Zagitova of Russia. And in third, we have Vivica Linfors of Finland. So, Sofia, Euros champion. She's a little firecracker. I love her. Yeah, definitely, I, I would say, well-deserved victory for her. It's her first senior season, which is pretty amazing. She's very much like slow and steady wins the race, you know? She's been kind of like storming the field <laughs> ever since Skate America. <laughs> well, I mean, in the sense that like no one takes her as the favorite for any given competition, but she just does what she does. And, you know, she just does it. <laughs> like nothing has significantly changed, honestly, in most of her performances throughout this season. I think her performance here was a little bit higher. She was really enjoying herself and loving the energy that the crowd was giving her and completely owning the free and like obviously she is probably the most consistent Russian lady in the field at the moment which is kind of crazy to say but you know this season has been kind of we kind of crazy in ladies in general you know she's just she has so much charm she's really such a natural performer and I saw that in in her in the in juniors last season she's got such a great expressive face and she really like connects with her music really well and like obviously like her technique in general isn't my favorite thing in the world you know her tano arm is quite quite unsightly you know she does the yeah. same thing that um elizabeth took to mishiva does where she bends it at the elbow it kind of looks a little bit aesthetically unpleasing to me and then you know her toe jumps are pretty blah hammery pre-rotated yeah they're quite pre-rotated and, you know, that's kind of a common theme with a lot of the Russian ladies and the Russian technique in general, I feel. But, you know, she's got that kind of, that spark, that performative spark. You know, it's it's great to see her do so well here. I really hope that, you know, this isn't a one-time thing. I hope she continues to grow as a skater in, like, for Worlds and then the season beyond that. It's just... Uh, I'm so glad that she was able to keep up the momentum here and have a good skate. Maybe that's like the theme of Euros is just momentum going into Worlds. But I just love how much she believes in her music. And just every time she goes out, she sells it 100%. And yeah, even though I disagree with her scores, I really think she was pretty overscored here. Like, I think she should probably be getting high 7s to low 8s in transitions and skating skills at the moment. She, I, I still think she was the class of the field here. And it wasn't really even close. Russia doesn't announce the world teams until after the European Championships. But at this point, I don't think they have any reason to not send her. Because she has been the most consistent Russian lady this season. And she obviously has big scoring potential. I think she's, I think, under-rotated one jump all season. Especially when they really need those three spots going into next season. Like, it's, it's not even a question. They should send her. I love Sophia, and I also love the way that she sells her music, especially that burlesque program. I was not into it when I saw it. At, I think Skate America was the first time I saw it. I was like, this is a little much for me. But the more like she performed at the season, the more I was like, oh, I, I kind of get it. And like, especially once she landed like her last two jumps in this free skate, she really just like brought it out. But also, I feel like this is a this is like a thing for both like her and Elisaveta is that a lot of what she's doing with her expression and her shoulders and her arms, it kind of distracts you from how little is going what how little is going on in her feet. It just feels a little bit like hmm I feel like there's something wrong here but I'm also entertained by it like I I wish that like I wish that they would add a couple of more things like you know transition wise to get rid of that uncomfortable feeling I guess so in silver we have Alina Zagitova you know continuing kind of a bit of a worrying trend in her skating that we've seen since you know the Grand Prix final and then Russian Nationals and now here kind of faltering in the free skate it's just really upsetting to see her have these kind of issues that she's been having with her jumps and just the reactions that she's had in the kiss and cry and oh god I mean my heart breaks for her honestly is it sad that when I like saw the free skate I was like you know this isn't as bad as I thought it could have gone it was <laughs> like, I, it was pretty bad the I... thing is though 
is that I feel like whenever I see Alina skate, she either nails it, obviously, or really, like, rits it out, like she did at Grand Prix Final with, like, a minor mistake, or she just completely melts down. So as soon as she fell on that triple lutz, triple toe, I was like, oh, it's all over for her. But, you know, she brought it back for a little bit. Like, she didn't completely, like, melt. (laughs) She didn't completely (laughs) melt down like she did at Russian Nationals or at Worlds, is what I'm saying. Well, yeah, I mean, I guess... It's not as bad as it could have been. Basically. Oh, yeah. Well, definitely. It could always be worse. I feel like, I don't know, just different benchmarks, I guess. That's the motto for figure skating. It could always be worse. I don't know. She, like, it was it was labored for sure. And she still ended up second. <laughs> like, so it wasn't as tragic. Yeah. When we say, like, you know, she's, like, having a really, you know, tough time, she's still getting second or higher at all of her events. But I'm going to be, like, totally honest. It's getting really hard to watch her. Like, every time I'm, like, watching live, I kind of, like, like, I don't even breathe until she goes into, like, the first jump. And whether or not she lands it determines whether or not I'm going to continue watching. But it's, yeah, it's just... You can see that her jumps are getting more labored and under-rotated. Literally every competition. Like, her jumps look so much worse. Especially her flip and her lutz. She obviously had problems in the free skate with them. But in the short program, her landings on those weren't great. They were quite shaky. And she, you know, there was quite a lot of ice spray when she landed them. And then in the free skate, obviously, she had those issues. And it's just, I'm so worried for the future of, a, of a her in general, but just these consistent problems that she's been having with her jumps, I'm, I'm just, they really, her team really needs to look at her technique and, you know, work on the issues that she's been having all throughout the season so far. I'm just, uh. Do you remember that, like, in her free skate, that really tragic, I think it was, like, triple lutz, triple loop attempt, where she, like, did a triple lutz and then, like, didn't get, even get off the ice and kind of almost marked it and did, like, a single loop or something it was a triple flip so she missed her opening combo and then she was going to put the triple loop on the second triple lutz but she ended up putting her hand down so she couldn't get it and then she went for the flip loop which i don't even know if she trains they should train her for a flip loop they gotta have one of them because her flip is a lot better than her lutz yeah she just looks exhausted and it's just like really sad to me that like yeah remember how like less than a year ago she just could casually tack on a triple loop to another triple lutz on the fly in a fully backloaded free skate like good times guys yeah well she's also i mean obviously she's grown a lot since then and again like this is something that her team should really look at is that they need to teach her the kind of technique that will last her throughout her growth and throughout her body changing because you can see like she is swinging her shoulders around like crazy before she even gets off the ground for her toe jumps. And it's not, it worked up into a point, it worked probably until like the end of last season and it's not working anymore. I feel like the only jump I can watch her do now is the double axle. Yeah, she goes to the double axle, like she's gonna nail it. Yeah, and it's like, it almost seems a little bit, you know, harsh to say this, but the fact that, you know, she had three clean jumping passes in the free skate and no clean combos and still got the highest PCS of the event, it just really hammers home how ridiculous her scores have been for the past season and a half and now her jumps are kind of you know sometimes here and sometimes not you can see the discrepancy between her performance and how she's rewarded for it and again this is just an example of kind of inflation doing the skaters no favors honestly i think that part of the problem could also just be the pressure of the competition because we saw in the in the exhibition When she was skating her program, she was nailing her flip. She was nailing her lutz. Like, both of those jumps were looking really, really solid in the the gala. So, you know, it could just be that the pressure of competition, you know, knowing her record, knowing the fact that she is the Olympic champion, all of that pressure going into it, you know, could be giving some sort of effect on her skating as a whole. I think we also need to consider the environment that she trains in and that she works in day to day. Like, there was... A video that surfaced of Alina in practice at Euros and apparently was having a really rough practice and a Terry at the end just like stormed out basically and someone caught it on a fan cam and also she trains with like the Russian girls who are doing quads like Trusova and Sherbakova and Kostrnaya yeah. are training mates so she sees like the competition that's coming up next season and that can't be easy for her to go out as the woman to beat still and have that hanging over her 
And so, yeah, there's definitely, I think, more at play here than just the fact that her technique isn't solid, but it's still just really, really tough to watch. And I want to say, you know, I hope she can, like, pull it back together and still, you know, have a performance that she's proud of at Worlds. But at this point, I'm just like, I just want her to be, like, healthy and to enjoy what she's doing. Like, that's that's it now. That's the number one thing, yeah. In third place, we have Vivica Linfors of Finland. So kind of a surprise bronze medalist. You know, she did have a pretty good early season. She had a bronze medal at Finlandia and then another one in December in Golden Spin. She had a top 10 finish at Grubbery Helsinki and, you know, it was it's kind of I, I I personally was surprised to see her podium here. I mean, personally, her skating to me isn't completely refined. She still has kind of a juniorish quality to me, but she definitely has like the best consistency of the Finnish ladies. I mean, extremely impressive to see at Euros. I was just so impressed by her triple watch triple toe. Like it's huge, yeah. Huge. Like she gets so much height and distance both vivica and emmy emmy has a really huge triple lutz as well but like she has trouble controlling it like the axis goes wonky and then she can't control the landing but vivica has a lot more control over the jump and it's it's impressive as hell yeah for sure and yeah obviously i agree that she could definitely use some more refinement but it's a great showing for her and i mean she's skating to Phantom and Les Mis, which (laughs) are, you know, very, very expressive music and they kind of help people that are working on their expression, you know, emote more. So I I think that this is just more like a a stepping stone, you know, to that maturity. So the Russian lady who did not make the podium, unfortunately, was Stanislava Konstantinova. She had a pretty disastrous short program where she ended up popping one of her jumps and then missing the combo and falling and was 11th after the short. Uh, Managed to pull herself up to fourth with the uh, second highest free skate score, which is pretty impressive. But again, this has just kind of been the trend with her all season is that she struggles to put together two good programs at big competitions. And she was, I think she was sub 60 in this short program here, which would have put her in the bottom of the top 20 at Worlds last season. So it's, again, this is really not the season for Rustfed to be, you know, screwing around with their spots and, you know, messing with politics. It's time to ensure that, you know, you can have three spots for all the juniors coming up next season. And right now it really does seem to be between her and Sophia for the world spot. And just like Rustfed, just do this one thing right, send Sophia to Worlds and you know, everyone can go home happy. The, yeah, they'll definitely send Alina and Elizaveta most likely. So Mishin said that Rustfed was told him to train Lisa for Worlds. So it seems, yeah, if she's healthy, I think she's going to get that second spot. Yeah, they're going to make the decision after a, a national comp that's going to be happening in a couple weeks the one that Evgenia is going to be at, you know, then they're going to make the decision about who to send to Worlds. But yeah, I definitely agree that Lisa definitely has earned her spot. Yeah, she has. I think that Sophia will go. I think that Agreed, like, yeah. so like what else could she do? She literally just won the European title. Sophia will be fantastic and she will, she will not disappoint. Oh God. I really hope I didn't just jinx no, her there. She'll be- <laughs> I believe in you, Sophia. And just a little quick shout out to Alexia Paganini of Switzerland. You know, this is the second time this season that she's ended up in the top three after a short program. You know, the first being at Ross Telecom and now here. And like, it's just, it's so good to see her do so well overall. I'm I'm a really big fan of hers. That I just really wish she would, you know, put it all together in the free skate because I don't know if it's, you know, nerves going into the free knowing that she is in contention for a medal or you know skating she skated last in the free here that's a lot of pressure so you know I really hope that she'll be able to put it together later if she does end up in that kind of position again because she really is quite a lovely skater hey I like this guy great stuff one of the best skaters I've seen come out of Spain for a very long time our shout out of the week for this week is to Javier Fernandez, our seven time consecutive European champion, who is sadly retiring right now after Euros and just 
we're all very sad. It's so it's just so funny to me that we like we knew this. We knew this for an entire year. We knew that Javi was going to retire at Euros, and yet we're still just like Javi. No, please reconsider. Please do Don't not go. go. <laughs> you can't really be retiring. What? <laughs> Everyone was just in this perpetual state of denial for the past like eleven months. I mean, I've been watching him for seven seasons now, and it's I don't know, just the happiness. And the charm and the charisma that he brings to the ice is something that I've never really seen in anyone else. Is that his his presence just makes you want to smile. He's charming. There's just he's just got such a charisma and a charm to him that's so unique and will be dearly missed. He's gonna really leave a big gap in the field, leaving skating mm-hmm. and just. Oh, I think so many of us are going to miss his presence at competitions. And it's just, I'm so happy that he's retiring basically a national hero. You know, like he deserves it. And this was always his dream. And, in, you know, he said that after this, obviously he's going to probably continue with his shows and tours, but he wants to start a skating school in Spain so that he can bring up the young talents in Spain. It just makes me feel so warm inside that, Uh, hearing him talk about how he wants to start his school in Spain like uh, Javi would be such a great teacher honestly he's really paving the way I think for Spanish skating which as we know is a very tiny federation like they have Javi and they have a couple ice dancers and that's basically it but I really think that now that he's become such an icon in his country and is well known that he's going to be able to spark like this renaissance of Spanish skating the same way that Kim Yana did for Korean skiers. And I just, Oh my gosh. Yeah. Where, I don't know, wherever his path takes him, I just want to be privileged enough to follow it, I think. And I'm so happy that he's going to stay in skating. It seems for the foreseeable future. And we're still going to be able to watch him, even if it's not in competition and it's, I don't know, it's just been such a gift, even though he won't be competing anymore. It's just all the memories that he's left us with. I'm going to cherish. I can't wait to see Coach Javi besides the boards, oh, you know, yelling God, I, I will, and I like will slapping cry. the boards, Brian style, <laughs> um, and like jumping up and down oh. and just being his big smiley happy self. Well, he still will be technically competing at Japan Open. So it's just it's like clinging on to yes. hope he's not retired yet. He can't be fully retired until he stops competing. But Listen, Javi, that offer for the eighth European title is still there. So <laughs> you could do it. If you just come along. You just come break on. Break that record. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for listening. We hope to see you again for our next episode, which will be about U.S. and Canadian nationals. If you want to get in touch with us, then please feel free to contact us via our website, inthelowpodcast.com, or on Twitter, Tumblr, or Facebook. You can find our episodes on YouTube, iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, and Spotify. If you enjoy the show and want to help support the team, then please consider making a donation to us on our coffee page. And we'd like to give a huge thank you to all the listeners who have contributed to our team thus far. You can find the links to all our social media pages and our coffee on the website. If you're listening on iTunes, please consider leaving a rating and a review if you enjoyed the show. Thanks for listening. This has been Kite, Kat, and Evie. See you soon!